Thanks, Michelle. Hello, everyone. My name is Billy C, and I'm an associate working in the New York office. Today, I'm going to present to you the Jakarta Signature Tower, which uh, I'm currently helping to design. In this project, I'm also working with Dennis Poon and Paul Fu, who is the project principal and project manager. Smallwood Reynolds Stewart Stewart and Associates is the design architect of the 638 meter tall signature tower. It will have 111 stories above grade and six basement levels. The total project area is around 6 million square feet. After its completion, the signature tower will be the tallest building in Southeast Asia. As you can see in this picture, in addition to the tower, we are also designing a 10-story tall retail podium with a 5,000 square meter ballroom, a sky garden supported by long span roof trusses, and a four-story bridge connecting the signature tower and the existing building. The tower includes multiple functions. From the bottom up, there are six basement levels of parking and 10 stories of retail, conference, and ballroom space. The next two thirds of the building is the office space with a high-end hotel above and two observations level at the top. Of course, the tower structure must resist the major hazard in Jakarta, which is seismic. This map shows all seismic events greater than magnitude 6.5 since 1900. The orange stars is Jakarta, and many red dots, many red dots nearby means a lot of seismic events happened in the recent past. In September 2009, a magnitude of 7.0 earthquake struck an offshore area which is only 200 kilometers south of Jakarta. Therefore, it is important to have a good structural system to resist the seismic forces. For many super tall towers, concrete and outriggers are used for economy, efficiency, and occupant comfort. This tower follows the similar pattern. The primary lateral system of the tower consists of a core wall, eight super columns, auricular trusses, and bell trusses. The nine cell core wall is roughly 31 meter in plan, and it resists the majority of seismic shear forces. The concrete walls include embedded steel plates to increase the shear capacity while without increasing the wall thickness, keeping the tower weight down. A mechanical force we connect the core and super column by our regular trusses, which is in purple, to use the full width of the tower to increase the lateral stiffness and strength. Also, we connect all the super columns together by bell trusses, which is in green. Each bell truss transfers the secondary gravity column loads to the super column to minimize the net tension forces in the super column. While outriggers and bell trusses can only occur in the mechanical zones, we have tested them in different locations and quantities to optimize the building performance while considering construction schedule and cost impacts. Since outriggers, bell trusses, length beam, wall, and super column all behave differently in an earthquake, we are using performance-based design to confirm acceptable tower behavior under seven sets of actual time history scaled to local conditions. With nonlinear time history analysis, we study the overall building performance and individual members' deformations under different severe seismic events. For example, the left image shows our buildings passes the storage drift requirement, and the center image shows more than 90% of our length beam deformations fall into the safe region. And the right image shows some of our wall is highly stressed and we need to put additional rebar because of that. The tower foundation is another challenge. Because Jakarta is on soft soil, the bedrock is 400 meter below grade. Therefore, we need to use a 6.5 meter thick mat to distribute the loads to friction piles 
which is 1.2 meters in diameter and 90 meters long. We also did a settlement analysis and reviewed the results with our geotechnical engineer to make sure our approach is correct and the prediction results are in an acceptable range. In conclusion, Signature Tower is not just uh, another mega tall tower. The different complex components, high seismicity, and poor subway conditions make it one of the most challenging projects in my engineering career. I would now like to introduce Luke Nisney of our Washington, D.C. office, who will talk about the Defense Health Headquarters in Washington. Thank you.